Stampers, Deb Velder here, your Fun Stampers Journey Coach, and today I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of masking magic. It is um, just a lot of fun. We're going to use our watercolor pencils, and it's just an adorable little card. Fast, fun, and let's get going. So today we're going to use some stamp sets. This one is going to be retiring called Sentimental Prince. It's one of my go-to stamps. I love the fonts in here. I love the little images. But I do use this one an awful lot. It is retiring um, at the end of June 2018. So make sure you have this one if you um, want to get it. Um, and one of my all-time favorites is the Grow Friendship Stamp. I just love the way these are um, set up so that you can make your own little journey on this um, stamp set. It's just adorable. It's absolutely adorable. So this one is Grow Friendship and this one is Sentimental Prints. And um, we're going to just start making some magic happen. And the reason I say that is because you can mix and match anything that you want in that little stamp set. So we're going to do this card right here, but I wanted to show you this one. We did this one in Continuing Ed, and they just loved it. They loved how you could take and you could color. You could, you could um, put anything in the little basket that you wanted. Um, it's just an adorable little set. All right. So let's grab. The first thing we want to do is to just grab our papers here. Um, these are all our... These are all of our little layers. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stamp the um, the uh, image. And what you want to do when you're when you're working with masking is to look at the picture and see what is the you can see everything of. So in this one right here, we can see the entire bucket. Now we can't see the entire um, flower, but we can see the entire bucket. So when you do that, the bucket is the thing that you're going to actually mask. You're going to stamp it first and then you're going to mask it and you're going to put anything and everything um, underneath it on top of that mask. Now, let me just give you another example. If you have a wagon and you want a little person in the wagon, so you would see the entire wagon, but you wouldn't see the little person's feet or, or their, their um, bottom. So what you would do is you would stamp the um, wagon, you would put your mask over the wagon, and then you would stamp the image um, of the little person on top of that mask. And then you would only see the top part of um, the little person. Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyway, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what I do with my masks because you can use them over and over and over again. And this is what we did in Continuing Ed. So what I do is, this is our, this is um, part of our journey storage system, these little pouches. I love these. So you not only have your stamps in here, um, I always tell you do not, do not throw this piece away. This is what your stamps come on. A lot of people put them on this right here. But when you do that, you can't see... Um, the words so and they're actually backwards so if I were to put this on here and I had a whole bunch of these you wouldn't be able to see the words um, or what they say you can kind of decipher them a little bit but if you have them on this little piece right here all right and <clears throat> excuse me minus all of my little um, masks here you can actually see the stamps so you can kind of pick off what you want. Whereas if you're looking at it from this side, you can't see what they are. So don't throw this piece away and then it just neatly slides right back into, into your little pouch and you're good to go. But I always use this for extra pieces. So I had an extra little um, <clears throat> watering can that I did. So I stuck it right inside there. You've seen me do that in other videos and I do that all the time. But what I also do is if I'm gonna make masks, I will do a whole bunch of them and then just stick them onto um, my little paper right here and you're good to go for the next time and you don't have to redo them. So I've been, been using these a lot and doing these a lot. So the first thing that you need to do with um, a, a card like this that you're going to mask and, and kind of build your layers is to grab a, a, a post-it note. So I'm just going to grab one of my big ones because that's all I have <clears throat> up here. And what I did was I stamped my little bucket. So what do I mean by that? In a post-it note, um, you have... Um, you have little stickies at the top, and that's where we're going to stamp our little bucket. So I'm going to grab the bucket right here. I'm going to mount it onto my awesome block here. And then um, we're going to stamp it right here at the top. All right. Now, what you want to do is to grab your scissors, and when you go to cut this out, we don't need to cut the whole thing out because we're only masking the very top of it. So I'm just going to go over to the bucket. I'm going to just, you know, cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but cut it out very close to the lines. And then All right. 
so this piece we're going to throw away and this is our new um, mask right here and because I did it with the sticky part on the top here's my here's my mask and it actually does stick now let me explain something if you don't have um, post-it notes you can just take um, like your easy glide and stick it along the back end of it here okay just you need something to make it stick and then just take your finger and get some of the oils from your finger on there and what that does is it makes it so that it's not super sticky so that you're not going to rip it when it comes off so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to grab the bucket and we're going to stamp it right where we want it um, when the, the piece is done okay so there's my bucket now I'm going to take my mask and I'm going to lay my mask right over the top of that okay now let's grab the flowers that we're going to use so um, these I think are hyacinths and we're going to take and stamp that now you're going to see that I'm going to take the bottom end of that and make it go down below the bucket and the reason we want to do that is because you don't want to see that little line all right so we're going to line it up and just stamp it right where the bucket is now do you see where that line goes below there like this isn't that so cute all right you take it off and look at the magic the flowers actually look like they are in the bucket instead of on top of the bucket all right so now I will take and I'll save all of these and what's so really cute about this stamp set is that it's got little things different little things that you can put stuff in so you can put flowers coming out of the watering can you can have them coming out of the bucket there's an actual um, planter right here the bucket it's just a really cute little set and they have all different little things so it's a paper piecing thing and you know how much I love paper piecing all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, my top layer here and I'm also going to stamp the watering can so I've got the watering can here and I'm going to stamp this little guy right down here at the bottom now I'm also going to paper piece this one right here but I'm going to show you how, to, how I did that in just a second so let's just take and um, get out our fantastic watercolor pencils um, these are one of my very favorite um, color mediums and I do love to color um, so this is our, our color splash pencils we use them with um, our watercolor pen because it is um, water based all right so we have actually two rows of these and when you mix and match we have every single color that the FSJ company um, provides so by doing that what I mean by that is there's a color palette right here and when you mix two of these they become another color so you actually have three colors in one right there and some of them have three combinations all right so we're gonna take I just I just pulled out two greens two blues and two grays all right so let's just let me just show you how I color um, and trust me I am NOT a professional watercolor but I just love love doing this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take oh, that one's a that one's a bit light let's go for a little bit darker um, gray let me see I think I think I'll use this one this one is our number 46 the uh, the 47 was just a little bit too light okay so let's um put these back over here and I'm gonna start with my lighter gray and just kinda it doesn't have to be perfect because remember we're going to blend this in with our watercolor brush now I'm leaving some white here in the middle because we want it to look like it's three-dimensional we don't want it to look like it's flat now what I'm gonna do with this gray the dark gray is to just outline this okay just outline the little guy right all the way around all right there we go all right that's all there, that's all there is to it now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same with the greens I'm gonna take and just put a little bit of a line here on the left because our light is coming in from this way remember I'm not a watercolor artist so I'm just doing it the Deb Velger way all right and then on the opposite side I'm going to bring in the darker green and this is this is more of an olive green all right let's do the same thing with the blues and this one I'm just going to color in everything because I don't want all that white in the background and that's where this watercolor technique really kind of takes effect now I'm going to take this one which is the darker blue and I'm just going to kind of outline these little flowers a little bit all right alrighty now we're ready to have the magic happen so let's look at the difference between the two of these alright so this one has all of your little rough lines it's got some um, I don't know it's just it's just really rough 
all right? So now we're going to take our little pen. I do recommend getting some, um, I do recommend getting a paper towel involved. We're going to squeeze our pen to make sure it's clean, and this one isn't, so I'm just going to run it through to get all the ickies out of there. And I always kind of swirl it to get the point back on there, and that's the beauty of these pens. They don't poof at the end. They're just, they just come back to a beautiful little point right here. I'm going to use the medium one today, but we do have a small, medium, and large. Very affordable. I recommend one of each size. All right, so let's start with the gray. I'm going to take the gray, and I'm just going to start moving the color around. And I'm moving it so that when I color, I use the side of my brush, and you'll see what I mean by that. I'm just laying the brush down and mixing the color in. Now, I'm not using special watercolor paper either. Fun Stamper's Journey paper is so awesome that you really don't have to use um, a lot of the, you don't have to use watercolor paper. We do carry it and I do use it, but for things like this, you really honestly don't need to do that. All right, so there is my, that's all I did. I just kind of blended all the colors together and you'll see I left some of the white Here's some of the light, and then over here is the darker. You can always go back in and add more. So I'm just cleaning the brush, and like I said, I swirl it at the end so that we have this beautiful little tip right here. And now I'm just going to do the greens. I don't want to color the whole thing in. I just want to kind of blend the colors together, because if you start squishing it around, you're going to end up with one color, and you just don't want that to happen. All right, so that's all I'm going to do to the green. It gave it more of a little bit, bit of a 3D effect. And now the fun is going to begin with the blues. All right, so I'm just coloring. And you see I left the darker, but I, I kind of smushed in the, blue, the lighter blue so that, and I'm kind of going outside the lines just a little bit to show people that this is watercoloring. All right, that's all there is to this card. Seriously, that's all there is to this card. Now, what I did on this one, you saw that I stamped it at the bottom of my paper right here. All right, let's get this out of here because it is a little bit wet. Um, I did stamp it at the bottom of the paper, but I also stamped another one and cut it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 3D one of these, and I'm just going to kind of pop it up just like that. You do want the one underneath it um, because you just do. I'm going to get my... Uh, my journey foam squares here, and I'm going to add this to the back end of it. All right, and that's going to go right here on the bottom. Okay. So cute. It just gives it a little bit of a, a pop. All right, and now what I'm going to do is add this with um, my Easy Glide. And that's going to go onto this little black layer right here. All right, now let's grab some of the medium foam squares. You can use less of these, and that's what I love about, I just like to save money, okay? And I'm just going to put two of them on here. You don't need to um, infiltrate the whole thing. All right, and that's going to go right here. Now, what I'm going to do next is to add my little sentiment. And that comes, again, from this retiring stamp set, which you really do want to get before it goes away. It's called Sentimental Prints. Just a beautiful, beautiful um, set of words. All right, and the images in there are just adorable. All right, so now I'm going to just take the thinking of you and stamp it right down here. Perfect. Okay, now... Let's take and add that to our card and our and our white and our, our base and our, our other piece. All right, so what I did was I always cut out the middle, um, and that's what I actually used for these pieces right here. Um, and we're going to add that to our card with our Easy Glide. Remember when you're using Easy Glide to just give it that little flick at the end to, um, uh, it, it just, whoops. It just um, eliminates it from the container. All right. Easy glide for a reason. Do not press hard on it. All right. Let's add this layer. And then we're going to do the same with this one. 
because we have so much dimension on the card itself, I didn't want to um, pop this one up too. But that's all there is to this adorable little magic masking card. Isn't that so cute? I just love it. And remember, in this little set, you can add all kinds of other little things to it. We have the clippers, we have the mittens, or I don't think they call them mittens in gardening, garden gloves. Okay, um, some fantastic little words, um, little stakes that have the words inside them. You can actually stick one of those inside there. It would be so cute. Grow Friendship. It's an adorable little set. All right, so here's my cards for today. I hope you enjoyed my post. If you have any questions, let me know. You take care, have a great day, and thank you for stopping by.